banging session now. The other road's just gone. We've got a double look up. One down soul, one down. Hi right, guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Tomorrow I'm going to be out at Keystone C. Why? Because the random wheel of fortune has decided that's where we're going. So let's just hope it uh, brings us as much luck as it did down at Galston last time. Um, I've got a few new plans and a few new uh, things I want to try out, weather and tides permitting. So I'll show you all that down on the beach. So without further ado, I'll see you when I get down there. Morning guys, how you all doing all right? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're just out at Caster. It's Monday the 3rd of June. It is nice and early. It's quarter to five. I'm all set up. So I'm all ready to go. Bait and everything. I haven't cast in yet. But I thought I'd try a new venue. I've come down here, um, down on Beach Road, to the Blue House. But couldn't, couldn't get parked there, so I just literally went around the corner. I've come out of Beach Road, taken a right. Well, just to the right of the... Um, lifeboat station I'm on a nice little point here I'll show you in a minute I can see the Chirag mustard oil in the distance on the right there on my enemy Britannia the pier gardens the cater point to my left we're smack in the middle on the end of the very left wind farm wind, wind uh, turbine I'll quickly show you rigs what I'm going to be using today Okay, left rod, I've got my Lafay long cast, 14 foot, full carbon rod. That's 45 pound, nine strand Hercules braid, 60 pound ASIO shock leader. That's going up to 70 pound rib body. I've got a two up and one down, not clipped down at all. I've got two size one, must have Viking hooks, just with plain. Bit of mackerel on there. I've got a four ounce grip on that, I'm gonna see if I can hold and a nice long snoo, but I might shorten that and I've just got a nice big chunk of uh, mackerel and squid just bound onto a 2-0 hook there and the other rod I've got me Blue Ocean both uh, Shakespeare Surf 7000 wheels I've got a uh, 20 pound Shakespeare Salt line 60 pound ASIO shock leader 70 pound uh, rig body pulley bead about three foot hook length going all the way down to a 3-0 and a 2-0 circle that's 3-0 that's the uh, mustard viking and a 2-0 cox and wall circle and a bit of mackerel and squid say so i've not even cast out yet <clears throat> but what i was thinking is i was having a bit of a scratch my head the other day and watching a few videos of the Pom Pete videos one sec but just about all the how about all the best anglers all, always seem to uh, get the fish no matter where they are and I was thinking that's the same you know with course fishing and that the best match anglers doesn't matter where the peg they all seem to get the best out of the peg and managing the swims and I was just thinking the other day they had a really good session at Galston if there's anything I could have done different and I think with beach fishing it's about doing what and when and how and, and the state of the tide so as I say it's about well probably about 10 to 5 now 5 to 5 it's high tide at half past 6 so it gives me an hour and a half of the flood so what I thought I'd do today is while we're on the flood not cast too too long and just go for fish baits because that seems to work at Galston and then it's when it's on the ebb and things start quieting down i can change the rigs smaller hooks go on the worms and uh, do that and then at uh, slack water which should be about 12 o'clock half past one which is probably when i give it quits i'll just go for a really light rigs like a 15 pound snoods size four bait older hooks and just do a little scratching rig and see if we can get the most out the uh, peg that we're in and 
see if it see if it makes any difference we'll see let's get cast out Okay, that's a hell of a tide on that. Bloody hell. Yeah, that's not even holding. That's bouncing along. That's five ounces. And that's wanging away. Right, let's bring that straight back in. I've just stepped to six ounces and it is absolutely uh, well up tide of that. That is a hell of a tide. Mmm. This could be tricky. I ain't gone too far with that. I was just very gentle lob. Okay, it's four to six, about two or three cats, and it's down to one one at the minute because the tide's are horrendous this morning. I've got six ounces on, five to seven on the big one, and that's not even holding. That is probably worse for whatever reason. But I'm casting it well up tide, put loads of slack line in it, and it's just basically coming to rest down to the left, uh, right of me. But, um, I'll give it to high tide, see how things are, maybe the very start of the ebb, but the weed isn't too bad. The weed's not too bad. It's a little, little bit of clumpy weed, but nothing is manageable. But the baits, the, the lead's not holding and it's just bouncing every 30 seconds. We're not going to get a fish. Constantly on the move all the time. So two or three casts, the bait will come back, come back clean. Not, not weed on the bottom, it's that floating surface weed again, high up the line. That's why I've got my rod pod as high as I can get it, the butt rest as high as I can get it, everything as high as I can. I'm in an hour of where to go. Maybe down to North Beach. Maybe South Beach. Somewhere. There's a bit of a cove at South Beach. 
a bit of an alcove maybe getting it in and away at the main tide or something. And it's totally straight flat beach here. And there's nothing to stop it. That's why I say it might have been better off at Radic Avenue because where the point is it comes down in the big bay. Then you step back along there. This rod is holding now, it's not too bad. Two up, one down. What I'm doing is casting out, I've tidied it. Then it hit the bottom, and I'm just walking back, I'm not even holding the line. Swooping it right above my head, sticking it on the rod pod, and let it just come round. So it settled about sort of two o'clock ish. So at least if we can hold the bottom and hold stationary for a couple of minutes, we've got a chance of a bite. Well, I'm going to grab a coffee and have a scratch of the, uh, the old nut. This one. <laughs> There's a fair few seals about. I know it's this morning coming out of Norwich, it's just the, uh, the weather and that. It's all about half a dozen hedgehogs all crossing the road. Which is quite a nice sight to see. There's a fair few boats out as well, just beyond all the uh, wind, wind farm. So there are charter boats and that, fishing vessels. Well, I think what I might do is get this fish bait and just literally flick it out 10 yards. You never know the chance of a bass or anything it's coming up to high tide in a bit, another hour and a half. I know it's deep beach, so going to give that a go now. Okay, it's ten past five. About two casts with each rod, but the tide's really strong. I've got six ounces on both. I don't really want to step up to seven or eight, but I might have to. I'm walking to the left, casting far up. I'm not casting too far. I'm just a gentle knob. Just the further I go out, the stronger it is. I'm only doing like 40 yards, 30, 40 yards. But it's drifting around so much, and I'm pointing the rods down tight, and it's helping. But it's not ideal, they're still coming to rest. You can see where the lines are. If I cast straight out in front of me, it's just bouncing like a bouncing bomb. We've got an hour and a half of the flood. Might calm down in a little bit. Tides. Tides normally out strongest in the sort of like last hour and the beginning and start and the end of the flood or ebb that first and last hour ties up the strongest in the middle that calms down. I wasn't expecting it to be this strong today. You know? Looking at the uh, tides and the weather and the maps and that, it's supposed to be a falling, uh, falling tide. So. Unless it has been a high tide recently. So it's got two up and one down rig on the left one. And a pulley pedal on the right one. It's coming up to high tide, it's not that far out, so there might be a few doggy or smooth hands around. Lovely morning. I was up early this morning. I did set the alarm for three o'clock. But I've got to go, go to the toilet. 
got back in bed, looked at the alarm, it's 2.35. Well, there's no point in going back to bed for 25 minutes. So I got up and just took my time. Got down here, set up by 10 to 5. We're just at Caster. It's literally a uh, Caster lifeboat station. It's just to the left of me there. Just right at the uh, left hand side of the wind turbines. I'm just going to go slacken the clutches off just in case I do get a bite. I can pour myself a coffee. Come on, you fishies. Apparently, it has been fishing quite well. I mean, I was going to go for, uh, I was toying on North Beach, but I've been there there so many times, and it's been a long while since I've been to Caster. That's the only thing about Caster. Like, just to the left of me, we've got the Caster Lifeboat Station. The next sort of bay is Braddock Avenue, which is on turn you around you might not be able to see it but in the distance just what there's there there's a bay where it comes in where all them birds are there's a little bay that's Braddock Avenue and where all the posts are way well in the distance that's case the point if you go to um, second Avenue toilets the, to the bottom there's some parking bays and there's a case the point there there's a load of riptides and rocks and everything. You can see where the waves are crashing over. That is really, really strong tides there at the point. It's where two, two tides collide over there. You get the riptides and it's so strong. I'm not, I've been there three times. Yeah, I've been there three times and never been able to hold the bottom there. It's like a washing machine. But it's normally not too bad here down at Braddock and that. But say Yarmouth North Beach has been fishing well. And I put the two in a spin spin the wheel yesterday. Three of each. Uh, give it the best of three and Caster came out. So I thought well, I have not been here for about a good year, year and a half. I don't think I've been here on camera. So give it a go. Okay, the mic didn't work here, but um, as I was saying that, I noticed three people, two girls and a guy, walked down to the beach early in the morning. They started stripping off and I thought, surely not, and they're not going to go for a swim. But yes, they decided to go for a swim. I mean, I wasn't holding with seven or eight ounces at this time. And you can see the surf, and it was a really, really strong tide. I thought, I just hope they know what they're doing. Well, they get in. It was in the water for five minutes. And I can see them trying to desperately find their way back to shore. <clears throat> and every time they were trying to get a bit closer, the waves were pushing back and pushing back. And I had my phone ready. I was about to phone 999 and ask for the life lifeguard. But I thought, well, it's only behind me. Surely they must see it. But uh, I had my phone ready. I, I was a bit concerned for them. And in the end, they did the right thing, and uh, they swam down tide towards me. And literally, that bay um, right in front of me is where they ended up coming out. But um, when they came out, the poor girl was visibly shaken, and I just thought, oh, a bit silly, bit very naive, very silly. Um, they should have waited till slack water. But uh, I suppose they learnt the lesson, then, and they all got out all right, which is the main thing. So what I decided to do, because it's a bit tough at the minute, I'm just going to try a bit of scratch in with salted love and squid on the top two smooth. And I've got mackerel and squid on the bottom one. I've shortened the hook link down to about a foot and a half. 
and get this cast out and see if we can get a white in. We we'll try and save a blanch early. <laughs> I'll give it a bit longer cast and just hopefully someone will get it as it happens. Okay, it's quarter past seven. It's been tough at the minute. The right hand roll, what I've had the worm on, I've brought it back twice and it's been rad. The middle snood and one above the lead is completely gone. So I'm getting the bite, so I've just not seen anything with this tide, but it is easing a little bit now. It's an hour after high tide. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to step up to a seven ounce on the big rod. And I thought I'd put a big bait on, just a whole bit of squid. Whole bit of squid, seven ounce lead, and I get this cast out. So not too far because it's that high tide. Let's see if we can get a smooth round or a doggy or something. Hey guys, I literally just turned the video off. That seven ounce is all holding beautifully now. Not moving at all. So fingers crossed on that one. For the right hand rod, I just got a sort of out the ordinary little tremble. Was it rod pull or anything like that? It's just a little tremble. So that happens when you get to my end. You get a sort of out the ordinary tremble every now and again. We got a little dab. Hey. We're off the mark, we haven't planned. The one above the lead, again. Salted lug and squid. We're off and running. <laughs> A lifesaver. Bit of dab hand at this. Just to recast the uh, two up one down, that tide slacking off all the time. But what I thought I'd do is, since I've just had that dab and obviously before I had two casts and the worms had gone, I've just baited all three hooks with salted lug and squid. Just one, one lug and squid on the top two and two nice big bits of salted lug and a nice big bit of squid on the bottom one and just see what happens. The tide's definitely slapping off now. This six ounce is holding as well, so. We're off the walk. We haven't blanked. Worth staying. Perseverance, isn't it? I know it's frustrating, isn't it, sometimes when you have all hopes and expectations when you come down here and it just gets chucked out the bloody window with the state of the tide. That's one thing I'm still learning, it's not necessarily about the wind, how strong the wind is, and I know, I know obviously it's all about the moon and the moon phases and that, but I've been out the last few months where it's been blowing a hoolie waves on but very little tide. Still learning, it's still learning all the time. But one of the reasons I was thinking earlier really I chose here, I was, I was looking at the map and the wind directions. And here, further north and here, the wind is a northwesterly. And I'm, you know, I was toying with the arm of north, and it's sort of northeasterly off of there, and then down southeast is more of an easterly. So I thought, you know, the old adage and the old saying goes when the wind's in the west, the fish bite best when the wind's in the east, the fish bite least but we'll see at least the dabs are biting but it definitely smells fishy 
definitely smells like the seaside today. You've got, you know, obviously a load of white bait and bits and pieces and the weeds breaking up, you can smell it all kelpy. So maybe another, if the weather pick up and it gets sunny and the weather will clear up a bit, we'll start getting some of the mackerel at North Norfolk. No doubt you'll probably still get a few now if you're out on a kayak or something or out on a boat, you'll probably get a few. But uh, There's plenty of dogfish eggs on the beach. They are dogfish eggs, so somebody prompted me in the last video. The other ones were whelk sack eggs, but uh, some dogfish ones here, if I can find them. They're like little teardrops. So I'm straight in the wrong pods right now, so I'm facing directly at the sea, and it's holding. It's holding fine. So that tide's slapping right off. That might all change on the ebb again. We'll see. Well, I think I've earned myself a coffee. Well, if you time in the cast, give it no more than 10 minutes, bring it in, check the day, it's too fast. It's 8 o'clock, <clears throat> we're at slack water, rods are just laid back, it's gone quiet, I expected to on the slack water. And I get this right hand rod now, brought in and recast out, and give it the big one. It's just one dab, but we haven't blanked, I'm going to make a day of it. So is there any uh, advice and tips you guys can give for when it's like really pushing hard? I'd like to know. They have been sort of like pointing the rod tips down tide and that, and giving it a bow. Oh, a little bit of bounce there on the rod. But probably what I'll probably do is I'll give the uh, big rod another big cast. I'll give it sort of like 15-20 minutes. Oh, and there's a bite. Um, little dab bite by the look of it. Got to keep winding down, winding down because the lines are slackening off all the time. But there's definitely a couple of two little knocks there. A few little trembles. Let's give that a minute. If not, I'll wind it in, see if there's anything on. I hate it when you can't get a bend on the rod. Bring it in and see if there's anything on. It's 
decided to go all carpy guys because uh, it might work for the fish. Get the old uh, camo so the whiting can't spot. You can sell this, but the carpers buy it. We've got to keep stealthy. Just in case. Maybe PVA bags are the way forward. Even a bait boat, you drop them. Still only one fish. We were trying. Is ever so slightly starting to uh, ebb. Not pulling yet, but it's going to get a bit of a bow in the uh, bend on the rod now. It's not laying flat. It's strange we had no whiting yet. But maybe they'll come later into the ebb. But one thing I'll probably do is give it about another half an hour. I take the pulley rig off and go for another two up, one down. I put a big, big mackerel on the bottom. Chance of maybe getting a dogfish that way, like we did the other day. And it just gives you a couple more hooks in the water and just fish really, really. It's about 20 past eight. So I'll give it another half an hour, then I'm going to change the pattern. Okay, it's starting to ebb now, it's about half eight. We've had a few little rattles, another little dab. Again, the one above the lead never fails, every time. Nothing on the top one, it's always the one above the lead. So I might bring the other one down a little bit, so they're a bit closer together. Now we'll get this on hook. You can see the hook there. Let's just grab the point in the hook. I'll just bend that. that hook straight out. Let's get him straight back. Two fish. And it looks like it's going to be a strong ebb as well. Okay, it's quarter past nine. Done what I said I was going to do. Taking off the pulley rig. Put another two up and one down rig on. I put the seven out. I kept the seven ounce lead on there, but I'm going to take that off and put the six on because I don't like the way it looks, the way it feels. The six is holding as long as you untied it. Still a strong ebb. But I thought I'd do a side by side comparison. I've got straight mackle on all three hooks on the right big which was the big rod on the left one i'm going to keep salted lug and squid but what i've done is because i only just um nip the crimps just ever so slightly the tie but if you get your fingernail wet the line you, you can you can move them so i brought the top one down closer to the mid uh to the slew one above the lead and the bottom one i brought up Got halfway up between the lead and the second one, so it's a bit of difference there. So we're closer together, just to hope to see if we can. Oh, and there's a bite there. Sure, that was a bite, and over like that we just tripped out. 
Yeah, just to see if we can sort of like get the fish in that killing zone because that's middle snooze do all the last two or three sessions is the one that's doing the business all the time so we've got three hooks to close together right, i'm going to bring this in i don't know if it's tripped or there was a definite rattle on there but i think this ebb's going to be as strong as the uh, flood but the weeds laid down there's no there's no, no weed at the minute on the ebb so Hey, the right hand rod before the mackle's only been out a couple of minutes. I've got definitely a couple of little shakes. So I thought I'd bring it in. And I'm not too sure on this, but it's either a sole or a turbot, but it's definitely different to the turbot that I caught the other week. It's completely round. It's a lot paler coloured. I don't know if you can see that. So if any answers, I'm not a fit. And it's got a nice rounded tail. It looks like a sole to me. Completely round and a round tail. And if it's a, like, like, a lemon sole, it's all mottled. Oh, well, I'll get this one back. Result, I'm glad we stayed. Fish number three. Just Bring it on. And the ebb's getting really, really strong. Really strong now. There's only a couple of minutes since I've had that fish. But the uh, inshore fishery managers just come down and had a good chat with him for 10, 15 minutes. And he gave me one of these. So, he did, I have had one of them not long back when I was at Yarmouth. Was having another girl that came along, but I thought I'd keep that. It's handy now to just put my backpack, have a measure things on it, check the sizes. I mean, I have them on my phone anyway, but I've got one in my box, got another one. It was really handy. He just told me some uh, where's fishing, what to do, and give me some new places to check out and what to search for on Google Maps. So cheers, buddy, thanks so much. That's all the help. And I just showed him the video of that fish. Well, one guy is going to know, he's the inshore fishing manager. He does all the way from uh, Lower Stock up to Sea Portland. And he said it's a brill. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's not a joke. Not quite a joke. Brill, brilliant. But yeah, new species. So we've had dabs. Yeah, I've had a dab. We've had flounders. We've had turbot. Sole. And now a brill. Closer to low water, they'll turn, it, turn up and all you do. But it has got a lot, where my rock body is, up there, I, 
behind Mark. Uh, I'll probably have to move the rod pod down in a minute. Another metre and a half. Okay, you guys, I haven't checked the time. It must be about half past nine, quarter to ten. Another little brill. Tiny little postage stamp, look. <laughs> Two in one day. New species. Second of the day, it's a tiny one, this one. Result. Still getting the fit, and that's on mackerel as well. So the brill like the mackerel. Brilliant. Okay, next cast. It's only been out a couple of minutes. This one was on the salted lug and squid. A little absolutely bent double. Bounced on the uh, rod pod. Stuck into it. And another brill. The biggest one of the day. Uh, this one was a little bit deeper hook, but not too much. You can still see the hook there. But um, I thought the best way to go unhook it was get the T-bar and just very gently go under the gill plate and turn the hook and then just pop it out back through his mouth. I'll show you that now. You're going to need a T-bar and you need to turn the fish away from you and do everything in reverse. Okay, I'm just going to lift this gill plate. I'm not going to touch the gills. There's a hole up inside. The red gills are there. It's going to go up gently and out of his mouth. It's going to twist the line three times around the T-bar. Just very gently. I'm going to pull that back. We just turn the hook. I can see the hook now. So I'm just going to turn the hook around. I'll just get this T-bar off. Okay, got the T-bar off. The hook's out. Again, I'm just going to very just lay the hook flat. And ever so gently, just push the hook back through the under the gill and then just literally straight out of his mouth just like that no blood didn't touch the gills everybody happy? I'm happy well we're getting back then banging session hey guys it's quarter past twelve nothing uh, on the air for the last hour or so a bit quiet it's low tide at 20 past one today we've got about 45 minutes so minutes left an hour of the max tide's really slackening off now so if you could have a mac um, a whiting i can't get my words out i've been up since three half two yeah we're going to get a whiting it's going to be built around about now within the next hour or so but yeah the bit's uh very strange in their absence today. Normally anywhere along the east coast you get a white in or two, but nothing today. Just loads of dabs and grills and that, but nothing else. No dogfish, no smooth rounds, no bass, no whiting, just flays. We're having a good day anyway, I'm not complaining. Even if we don't catch anything else. We had a good day. Proud of myself for sticking it out. Because I was so close to quitting and trying and going somewhere else, but... but like I said, once, once we've called... called somewhere to go, we'll stick it out for the day regardless. Unless it's really, really bad. I mean, if it's just tides impossible, the wind surfing all the rest of it, weed, but... There's no weed at the minute. It's been good on the ebb, so... And it's not bouncing as much on the ebb. That hasn't been as bad. The start, the first one, like half an hour, 45 minutes, like it always is, and then it's calmed down, but... The rods are slackening off more and more and more. we we'll say about 45 minutes or low water. So I'm always pointing the rod pod at the sea again. I was aimed parallel to the left, 
and I'm just sort of like moving it back as the tide's slackening off and I'll probably start lowering the rod pod again and what I probably will do this time these six ounces, we've got six ounces on both now they're holding nicely as long as you up tied them they're slacking off a little bit more give it another sort of 20 minutes I'll stick five ounce leads on and when it's slack lead, uh, slack tied last week when I dragged somebody else's rig in when I lost that uh, smooth down there's a nice four ounce gripper on there so I put a four ounce gripper on if it'll hold but yeah I'm stick, sticking with the same principles at the minute this right hand rod's still got a uh, mackerel on it just straight mackerel on the top two and mackerel and squid on the bottom hook and this one's got salted lug and squid on the top two and a bit of mackerel on the bottom one of mackerel and squid I don't see the point of uh, putting the, the pulley pedal rig back out now and coming up to low water But how are you guys doing anyway? You been out at all? Anyone been up, up along the east coast at all? Decent fish, just send me your pictures. You got any nice smooth hands or decent dogfish or anything else? Not any nice bass? The bass are eluding me this year. Last year, down at Galston and that, and Yarmouth, no end of schoolie bass. I'd like, to, I'd like to beat my PB bass because i any, not had anything like over a pound so that would be, that would be good get yeah, a decent bass but you never know I wasn't expecting to come out today and catch three brill so you just never know what's out there I wasn't expecting to catch turbot at Hopton, well, there you go. Wasn't expecting to catch place at Caister and that. We're sort of having an influx of flatfish at the minute. <coughs> Different species in the birds. Oh, there's Mr. Seal popped his head up again. Yeah, but a few, few gilt head bream in that coming out near North Norfolk. Yeah. And trimming in as well, I think there was a uh, gilt head bream. So the seas are changing. I mean, if they're getting tuna down, you know, Devon and Cornwall, bluefin tuna and all the rest of it. I like the look of the, um, just to the left is the case, the lifeboat station. And as it goes in, it's the big, almost little spit that sticks out of it. A couple of a couple of extra sort of like five foot from the rest of the uh, shoreline here. And it's a nice, all day there's been like a nice surface scum, sort of muddy area. It just looks right for me, just a lob one in short down there. I'll spin you around and have a look at it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see where the lifeboat station bit is. Mm -hmm. This bit here, just around here, there's like been a foamy wash here and like a muddy colour all day. I think it must come up deep there and onto a sort of sandy bank. So notice that high tide, it was like a constant wave just there coming up. I, mean, I was going to plonk myself there this morning but I thought uh, just in case there is any sort of emergencies and the lifeboat needs to get out I don't want to be too I mean I'm not sure if they still launch from there the doors are open so I assume they must so yeah I don't want to get too close to that just in case they're practicing want to come out and this that and the other I have to move your bob pod and this being in the way just being a bit respectful really or not being so stupid. 
There's somebody out fishing to the left. I think we just got down half an hour ago. I've not seen him had anything. But because we started earlier today, I'm probably going to give it to low water and then call it quits. And I'm off. So um, I'm off today for last week because I only had one day, and then I'm off tomorrow and Wednesday. So I'm going to have a few bevies tonight. I'm going to have a few beers to celebrate because I didn't have any last night. I stayed on the cups of tea. I was a good boy, being responsible. <laughs> I knew I was going to have an early night up and driving. I didn't want to have anything, not knowing if I'm leaving at three o'clock in the morning. So I'll have a few bevies tonight, get some computer stuff done, upload this lot of stuff, finishing or start to do next week's uh, video, which was last week, which was filmed last week, down at Galston. I'm finishing off, I've still got to finish the one that's going to go up this Friday. Which is like a double episode of uh, Caster and Trimmingham. I thought I'd split it into two, one second. Yeah, I thought I'd split it into two videos because I didn't want to sort of like upload an hour and a half video because I think it's for YouTube it's a little bit too long for people to sit and watch through like an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes. So I thought I'd do it into two 35 minute films. Seems to get more views that way, it's, you know. Oh, I think I've got a bite on the left hand rod. But, uh, yeah, people just, you know, what half an hour film to watch. And, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So I've got plenty to work on. And then Wednesday I'll probably get back out again. Don't know where yet. I'll let the uh, random spinner decide. Okay, yeah, quarter past 12, really quiet. Thought I'd have a little bit of a play about. Got the right hand on him. And what I've done is, from the bottom, I put a whole cook shell on for with a little bit of squid. I found it on for a bit of uh, bait elastic. The one above the lead, I put a whole raw pink corn. Tipped with a tiny bit of squid. And two or three uh, salted lard in squid on the top. That one's still got back, the left one's still got back on all three. We'll just see what's what. See if there's any preferences out there. You know, I've got other baits, I've got a few mussels, I've got some herring. All fish bait seems to be working. That's been the salted love, but. Um, yeah, there's going to be nothing to lose at the minute. Give another half an hour and then we'll uh, pack up a drink. I might as well have an experiment now and we'll swap in the slow. So I'll probably do it while I'm here. Where's my microphone gone? Oh, I hate it when that happens. Delete this one. Okay guys, it's quarter past 12. I'm going to give it another half an hour or so and then call it quits. But I thought I'd have a little experiment and play about now. So I brought the uh, smaller rod in, the long cast. I mean, they're both identical, but on the bottom, I put a whole cooked king, uh, king shell on form with a little bit of squid and just bam that on. The one above the lead, I put a whole raw king form, tipped with a tiny bit of squid. And the top one's two or three salted lug and squid. Still got mackerel on the left one. And let's see if there's any preferences out there. But as I say, you're probably giving it another half an hour and then call it quits. So <clears throat> if I catch another fish, I'll get back to you. But it's probably a good time to sign off now. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope there's plenty of bits and pieces in there for you. There's, you know, a couple of new species and uh, plenty of fish. Nothing big. 
but uh, that's the way it goes so yeah take care guys cheerio i'll see you again in another video wherever that might be